Well, happy Wednesday to everybody. This is Pastor Milton with uh, Faith Christian Center World Outreach, bringing you another sample of daily bread. So we've been talking about this week, everything that the blood of Jesus has afforded us, everything that has come because of that blood. Uh, so much of um, the, the things that we talk about in the church, uh, how God has redeemed us, all of this was made possible by the blood of Jesus. And so today we're gonna continue in this and we're gonna talk about the voice of the blood of Jesus. And so uh, that blood has a voice and it is speaking on my behalf and your behalf. And so we're gonna talk a little bit today about the voice of the blood of Jesus. If you look in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, uh, I'm gonna start at verses, verse 22 and I'm gonna read all the way down through verse 24. It says, but you are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn. So this is also letting us know of our spiritual place there, um, which are written in heaven and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that what speaks better things than that of Abel. So we see here in verse 24 that that blood speaks. It does announce and it declares and it, it, it is decreeing some things on our behalf. And the, the good thing about that blood is that it doesn't tire out, it doesn't fade, it doesn't get quiet or silent because this is going on or that is going on. It is forever speaking on my behalf and on your behalf. And, and trust me, we need it. And so uh, that blood is speaking. Now, it make, makes something, uh, an interesting statement here. It talks about the blood of Abel. And, uh, and it says that the blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood of Abel. And so when, we, when you think about the blood of Abel, who um, was slain by, Abel was slain by his brother uh, Cain, and that the blood of that innocent man was speaking from the ground, okay? It was speaking on his behalf. And so the blood of the innocent always speaks, okay? You understand that. And so if the blood of an innocent man, in this case, is, they're mentioning Abel and what happened with him, um, if his blood was speaking, and I'm sure that blood was crying out for vengeance and crying out for justice to be done. So what do you think that the blood of Jesus, who was a sinless man, who was beaten, who was shamed, who was crucified, who is our resurrected Lord of glory, what do you think that blood is speaking on our behalf? Not just his behalf, okay? This is what you have to understand. It, it doesn't say that that blood is speaking on the behalf of Jesus. It says that that blood is speaking on our behalf. See, Abel's blood was speaking on his behalf, okay? But Jesus' blood is speaking on our behalf. And so that blood was placed on the mercy seat in heaven. And as it, it, it's crying out mercy for you and for me, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It says in verse 24 that that blood is speaking better things, okay? That, that can be a lot of different things, okay? That that blood is speaking on our behalf right now, okay? And this is why it's so powerful what the blood of Jesus has done for us and what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. So many things that we're still unlocking and understanding um, as we look through scriptures and understand these things, but the blood of Jesus is speaking on our behalf, and, and, and maybe you didn't think the, vo the blood had a voice and that it could speak. We only think about things that have a mouth to speak. But the blood speaks on our behalf to God. And it's telling him a lot of different things about us that help us out. Okay? Things that we could not do ourselves and for ourselves, but Jesus did. And his blood is now speaking on our behalf concerning those things. Isn't that good? I know it is. And so, um, one major key to our spiritual function. And yesterday we talked about having access to the throne and being able to, uh, uh, to, to speak uh, and to go before the throne of God uh, concerning things that are going on down here. As the Bible says, to approach the throne room of grace, um, to receive mercy and grace to help in the time of need. So we have access to be able to go before God whenever it is that we need. And so, one major key to understanding our spiritual function in heaven is to recognize that we are kings and 
priests. We are kings and priests. 1 Peter 2.9 talks about it. Revelation 1.6 talks about it. Revelation 5.10 mentions it, okay? Um, as kings and priests, we declare, um, or those verses declare that we've been made kings and priests unto our God. The job of kings, well, excuse me, the job of priests is to get legal things in place. That's the job of the priests, to petition the Lord, to petition God about the things that are going on. The job of the king is to decree from that position of authority. You understand the difference? And so God has made us both to be able to petition, okay, so that things are right or made right that aren't right, and then also to give us the ability to, to speak and to decree those things from the position and the authority as a king, okay? Uh, a king decrees things, and what goes forth out of his mouth becomes law, okay? And this is what God has done. God is the king, okay? Jesus is the king, and he, what he decrees becomes law, okay? Becomes spiritual law, becomes natural law, so on. And so that is the job of a king, and God has made us as priests and kings unto our God, okay? To be able to decree and to speak and to petition on his behalf so that his word that is in heaven will be manifest here in the earth, amen? And so Aaron as a high priest would go before, um, before God, he would go behind the veil in the tabernacle one time a year and sprinkle the blood. The blood, as we mentioned, has a voice, okay? The testimony of that blood would grant God the legal right to roll back Israel's sins for one year, okay? Thank God that Jesus has done that for us once and for all. God would then bless his people rather than judge them. God is always looking to bless us, heal us, to restore. Aaron's activity as priests allowed God that right. And this is why it's so important that we go before God as kings and as priests. Um, it is our job as priests to take not the blood, of, the, the blood of bulls and goats, excuse me, but the blood of Jesus that is speaking better things, as we mentioned. Through our function as priests, we give God the legal right to fulfill his passion to bless us. Um, we have a right from that position that Jesus has granted us to execute into place the verdict of the cross. Remember, we talked about a couple of days ago about how Jesus nailed everything to the cross that was against us. Okay, and so that's the verdict, okay? The, the gavel has been slammed, okay? It's been decided. It's a closed book. It's a done deal, okay? And so when we go before God, we get to exercise that verdict of Jesus being crucified, okay, and risen, amen? And so that's the good news, that we serve a risen Savior, not just someone who passed on, but like all of them, in, but he is risen, and the verdict has been settled, and we able to, are able to continue in that by coming before God as kings and priests. So uh, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to another uh, episode of Daily Bread. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on Thursday morning. Uh, this is Pastor Milton, and uh, I say have a great day.